Okay, so we are, I'll give bet, I'm with bet. The last mid wide line ends with the line, word with uh, the packet. Um, Pass up from Megillah. We have killed, sorry, Hamelech Kidim. This is after he, he has killed his wife. Akashosh gives out an order to find a new wife and places officers to bring them in. Lafkid, Hamelech Kidim. I'm Rabbi. My dictator, Kolarum Yase Bedat, Uxi Yfos Yvelet. Um, which is a pasuk from Mishle. The pasuk means like this. Every prudent man acts with knowledge, but a fool spreads out his folly. Every prudent one acts with knowledge refers to David Amalek. We know that David Amalek, when he was very old, he came uh, very cold. And it was suggested by his advisors to bring a young virgin who would be able to lie next to him and warm him at night, or even during the day. And his servant said to him, May our master request a young virgin with the um, intention of some basically a human water, um, water bottle to warm him at night and whenever he's cold. Nearly. David Melech was such a holy man that everyone who had a daughter would bring the daughter to him for him to consider. I mean, no one's trying to hide them away. But a fool spreads out his folly. Who's that referring to? The one who is the fool spreads out his folly refers to Achashverosh, um, who places Officers searching for the girls call to, to marry to replace Vashti, and now it makes sense to want to hide. Or seems secondly, want to hide their daughters because he just killed his wife. Why would anyone want their daughter to marry someone who's just killed his wife? Call man to have a le brata itamara mine. Anyone had a daughter would hide her from him so as not to end up being married to Achashverosh. Now we'll move on to another pasuk in the Megillah. Ish Yudi Hayabishushan Habira. Begomer Ish Yimini. Right? If we translate it literally, a man of Yuda lived in Shushan Habira. And the end of the pasuk says, Ish Yimini, a man of Yamin, which refers to Shavet bin Yamin. So what, what tribe is he from? Is he Yudi? Is he bin Yamin? Now colloquially, if we just look at the Pshat, by then it would seem that Jews were known as Yudim um, because the main tribe that were exiled with the southern kingdom were Yudah. But in any case, the Gemara wants to look for deeper understandings. How is it possible he's called an Ish Yudi and Ish Yimini? My Kamar, Il Yuchsa Kate Leachse, Vazir Ad Binyamin. If it's coming to teach me all his Yuchus, right? Because in between that bit, the Gemara didn't quote the whole thing. He also calls him Ish Yudi. And it gives this whole this whole line of who he is. It says Mordechai Ben Yair Ben Shimi Ben Kish Ishimini. So we're going to look into how he's from Ben Yamin as well. What about all the other names? It says the Gemara. If it's coming to teach you Yichus, his family tree, Iluchus Kate Liachsev Azeh Ben Yamin. Teach me until all the way back until Ben Yamin, his forefather, his ancestor. Ella my Shana Hani. So why is it teaching all these? Tanakulan al Shmoniku, teaching all of them to refer to Mordechai himself, something unique about Mordechai, meaning Ben Yair, Ben Shimi, Ben Kish, all come, the, the name Yair, the name Shimi, and the name Kish come to hint towards something with regards to Mordechai. So Ben Yair, Ben Shi'ir, Enehem, Sheisebet Filato. Ben Yair, he's called Ben Yair because he's the son of the nation. And he, he's a son of someone. He, he attributes him the, the, the light, the Yair, comes the word, oh, light. So he he il at he awakened or lit up the eyes of Israel 
through his tefillah, probably because they had darkened eyes, meaning they were depressed with what was about to happen, the destruction, and he was able to daven and um, achieve um, repentance for the, uh, and forgiveness for the nation of Israel, and as such, kapara, atonement, as such, lit up their eyes. So that's Ben Yehi. Ben Shimi, we're now five, uh, six lines up in the Gemara. Ben Shimi, about to finish it. Ben Shishama et filato, el filato. Why is it called Shimi? Shin mem ayn yud. From the word Lishmoa, he's the son that was listened, that his tefillah was listened to. Ben Kish, he is called Ben Kish. Now, la Kish are dead, it's a knock on the door. So that's Shikish Asheri Rachamim, and if they're he is knocking on the door. Of Shemaim and, and, and those doors of Shemaim, those gates of Shemaim were opened to his prayers. Kaila Yudi, Alma, Miyuda, Kate, and he's called Yuda, Yudi, because he comes from the tribe of Yuda. The Gemara then challenges the Kaila Yimini, Alma, Mibinyamin Kate, but he's also called Yimini. That implies he's from the tribe of Binyamin. Alma of Nachan. Mordechai Muhta Bimusehaya. Rather, it's coming to teach that he had Nimusim. He had he was very polite, he had good contact. He had the good conduct of both tribes, both of Binyamin, the, uh, the honorable names of both his father's and mother's tribes, meaning he was from one side from Binyamin, one side from Yuda, and one emphasizes because he inherited those characteristics of both those tribes. Amar Rabbi Baal Khana, Rabbi Baal Khana says, Amar Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, he says it in the name of, uh, uh, of Levi, like just as we said, um, as we learn here, let's go back, four lines up, Amar Rabbi Baal Khana, meaning we said that Rav Nachman says that he had the good characteristics of both these tribes and because they um, and the fashion explained because his parents were both from both tribes and where's the evidence from that how do you know that because of what we're about to say i'm rabbi baba khana i'm rabbi yeshua ben levi three lines up aviv binyamin vimot miyuda his father's from binyamin and his mother is from Yuda. normally we don't really would say care but we're not interested who the mothers are or from what tribe they are, we do care, obviously care about the mothers, but we don't care. it doesn't give much of a talking point to know who the mothers are. With the case of Mordechai, because it's so important, Mordechai is such an important individual, and he inherited like, the character traits of both tribes, we then even emphasize who his mother is. Actually comes to, Rabbanan say, this comes to hint that the families of Binyamin and the families of Yehuda were fighting, were quarreling, over who really was the um, um, who has the merit to say um, Mordechai belongs them more. So it goes like this. Rabbi Amrei Mishpachom Mikod Zubazu Mishpacha Yehuda Omer Ana Karim Dimid Mordechai Telo Katli David Bashimi Ben Gera U Mishpacha Binyamin Amra Minai Kate. So Yehuda said. Actually, Mordechai only exists because of me. I mean, that's why it's called Yudi. He only exists because of me. Why? Because we know that, when you look at Sefer Shemur, we know that Shimi ben Gera, who was a thorn in the side of Dav the Melech, Dav the Melech could have killed him, but he didn't. And because he didn't kill him, that's why Mordechai was born, because he was his descendant. And as such, Yudi can say, which is the tribe of David, Yudi can say, Oh, he exists because of me. Uh, and therefore, he's a UD. And the family of Binyamin can say, no, I mean, biologically, genetically, they're from my family. Rava Amar, Kaziza Amra, Lida Kisa. Not they were taking pride. Rava says it was the other way around. Kesel, the nation of Israel are really annoyed with Mordechai because the situation, the situation they see that he's got them into, and each of them are trying to say, uh, like he belongs to that tribe, not our tribe, that tribe, not our tribe. Um, okay. 
they seem as like the source of the problem, right? So, they're fed up with both tribes. They're fed up with Yuda, because Yuda never got, we're now just gone over to Yukimaru Dalaf. They're fed up with Yuda because Yuda didn't get rid of Shimi. And if Shimi hadn't been, hadn't survived that long, then he wouldn't have had the an sense and, and Mordechai wouldn't have uh, survived and he wouldn't have caused all the anger because if you look at the story of the Megillah the whole reason which angers Haman so much is an anti sema anyway but it's clear what really gets on his nerves is the fact that Mordechai refuses to bow down to him and therefore well, you could say the whole story of the Purim story is because of Mordechai not bowing down to Haman okay um so they're first annoyed with Yudah, and they're equally annoyed with Binyamin. What's he done for me? The Lord Katle Shaul Agag Shaul didn't kill Agag as soon as he caught him. Agag was the king of Amalek at the time of Shaul, and Shaul didn't kill him straight away. And the Haman Israel Israel, and from Agag was born Haman, who gave so much trouble to Israel. Right? We call him Haman Haagagi. Why is he called Agagi? Because he's from Agag, the king, generations beforehand. Uh, we know that night, somehow, Agag was able to um, impregnate his wife or servant, whatever, and that gave a continuation for Amalek. Um, and it enabled Haman to be born. Okay. Rabbi Yochanan Amal Olam in Binyamin Kate. Really, Rabbi Yochanan says he's from, for sure from Shev Binyamin. There's no discussion, really. So why is he called a Yehudi? Why is he called a Yehuda? Uh, why is he called a Yehudi? Because any person who rejects Avada Zara, idol worship, and, and denies it, is known as a Yehudi. Kedichtiv, iti, govrin, yudain. As he says, in Sefer Daniel, Itai Kuvrin Yudin. There are Jewish men with me. Meaning, and it can uh, become clear from the context over there, it's referring to people who are refusing idol worship. And that's what makes them Yudi. Rabbi Shuman Ben Pazi, so that's why he's called, see, he's the one who refuses to bow down to um, the statue, which is around Haman's neck, going to Midrash. Rabbi Shuman Ben Pazi, when Rabbi Shimon Ben Pazi would start learning the book of Devarim, Amar Hachi All the intentions are the same. Meaning, in fashion explain, there are many names. Um, there are many names to. Sorry, there are many names for different people across Tanakh. And they refer to the same people. They in very different names. And it all refers to the same. The Anu, the same person, not every single name, but there are many names referring to the same person and don't think it's a different person. Vanu Yodin Dorsham. And, and Rabbi Shimon Bahad Pazi you know, says, and we know what to learn from these names, meaning they have different, deeper meanings. Vishto um, Hayudia. So this is Pasuk from Tiveryamin. And his Jewish wife. She gave birth to Yered, Yered Avi, the father of Gedor. Okay, now it's going to be interesting because we're not going to, that's how I'm translating it for now. We're going to say a second that it's not literally translated like this. I mean, that's the literal translation, just names. We're going to learn out those names in a second, which is exactly what Rabbi Shimon Ben Pazi said. And there's deeper meanings. Vet Chever, Avi Soho, and there was Chever also. She gave birth to this woman. Ishto Hayudi, Hayudia gave birth to a guy called Yered, Avi, the father of Kedor, and Hever, Vet Hever Avi Soho, and Hever, the father of Soho, Vet Yukutiel Avi Zenoach, and Yukutiel, the father of Zenoach, Vela Bne Batia, Papo Eshele Kachmed. And these are the children of Batia, the daughter of Pao, 
which who is married by or who is married with married to sorry married okay wonderful married okay am i kaila yudia so why is this woman called yudia we now know she's called but she's batia batia is her name so why is she also called yudia because she denied or rejected either worship how do you know she de- de- denied either worship? I mean, she's nice to Moshe, but who she says she denied either worship? She went down to, she, Batia, went down to wash at the Nile. Why did she go down to wash? Like, lots of people go down to wash. Why is it specific? Why, do, why does the Torah tell us that? She went down to purify herself from the idol worship which was happening in her father's house. Yalda, then goes, what, she gave birth to these people? We know that. Now we're about to say that all these people are Moshe Rabbeinu. She gave birth to Moshe Rabbeinu? No, she didn't. She adopted him. Yalda, va, revoy ravite. She didn't give birth to him. She brought him up. She adopted him. She reared him, but she didn't give birth to him. From this we learn, she called Amagadeh Yetom Yetomah. From this we learn, says the Gemara, anyone who um, adopts and brings up a uh, a orphan, male or female, it's as if the pasuk sees it as your own child, mamash. Okay, now we're going to these people, right? We had Yered Avi Gdor, Chever Avi Socho, Yukudel Avi Zunach. Okay. So now we're going to learn about these people. Now, Yeret is one name, father of Gdor. Now we're actually going to say Avigdor is a different person. Okay, Yeret is a Moshe. So Yeret first is Moshe. Why is it called? Why is it? Why is it called Yeret? Why is that one of his other name names? Lamanika Shmo Yeret. Come ask. man because man came down in his days. The word Yeret comes with Yarat to go down, and in his days, man came down from Shemaim. Gdor. Gdor comes the word Gedel. Why is he called Gdor? In other places he's called Avigdor, but okay, this, so this is going with just the word Gdor. Why is he called Gdor? Shigadar Pilzotem, she said that he um, fenced off the licentiousness of Amisha. Sorry, a bit harder word to say. Licentiousness. Okay, he, he, he fenced that off. Um, Okay. May he stop this sinning, one could say. Chever. Shechiber et Yisrael l'avim b'shemayim. Why is he called Chever? He was able to connect Am Yisrael to their father in heaven. Socho. Why is he called Socho? Socho comes the word, even though over there in Tiberiyam it's spelled with a sin. Sin and Samach are interchangeable. And here we're using the word Socho with he made himself, he, was, he became a, like a sukkah, like he covered them like a sukkah. And now, Yukutiel, um, why is he called Yukutiel? Why is Mashur Ben also called Yukutiel? They hoped for Am Yisrael in the days of Moshe hoped, longed for God in his days, meaning Moshe was only caused them to hope for God. Zonoach, lazniach means to um, neglect. So Zonoach, shizniach avonotem sheisrael, he caused God to neglect their sins, meaning to ignore their sins. But hold on, in all those places we said, go back to it, we said, yed avigdor vet Avi uh, and you could hear Avi Why is it mentioned father, 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 the father of? What's that? If we've said all these people, Moshe Rabbeinu, why is the word Avi there, my father, or the father of? So it says three times he's a father. Why? Because he's Av Torah, father in Torah, Av B'Chokhmah, father in wisdom, Av B'Nevu, and father in uh, prophecy. Gemara that now continues. Okay. With the end of that post, we should learn about Moshe's names. Veila bnei Batia, Asher, Lekach, Marid. These are the children of Batia, who is married to Marid. 
Now we have background knowledge of this, that Batu is actually married to Kalev, Kalev, Ben Yifune, the one who rebelled against the other spies, just like Yoshua did. So what's going on? Why is he called Maret? We know his name is actually Kalev. So why is he called Maret or Meret? So Kosh Baruch Hu says, May Kalev, who rebelled against the advice of the, the council of the um, spies, the ten spies, he should marry Bat Poro, the daughter of Paro Batia, Shmarda Begilule of Betavia, because she also rebelled against the idol worship of her father. Okay, now we're going back to Megillah. Asher Higla Me Ushaim. We're referring to Mordechai, who is exiled from Ushaim, meaning we need to remember Mordechai is the same Mordechai who was born in the land of Israel and was survived the attacks of Babylonians and was exiled to Babylonia. Asher Higla Me Ushaim. Amar Rava, Shkala Me'atzmo. Rava says he actually implies that he exiled himself, he left of his own accord. Um, and Rashi says, for the fact that he didn't say, say in the passage, Shaya Minat Golat, that he was from the exile, Asher Golata, rather it says, Asher Golat, Ima Golat, he was exiled with the exile. Mashma Shaloya Kashar Yisrael, Kashar Yisrael. It implies that he wasn't like the rest of Israel, Am Yisrael, Shagulat Kochan, which were forced to be exiled. I'm reading Rashi now. Vu Gala Matzmo, he exiled himself. Just like Yemiya, who exiled himself and returned only when God told him to, Mordechai seemingly understood the time would come and exiled himself and didn't wait until he was forcibly done. It was forcibly done against him. Um, okay. Vai Omen et Hadassah, and he adopted Hadassah. Who's Hadassah? That's Esther. But wait, hold on. Kamara's going to ask, Kaila Hadassah, but Kaila Esther, she has two names, Hadassah, and she's called Esther. Tanya Rabbi Meir, I'm going to see which is a real name and which is a different name which comes to teach something additional. Tanya Rabbi Meir, Esther, Shema, Velamani, Kaila Hadassah, so Rabbi Meir says, her real name is Esther, and why she have a second name called Hadassah? Hashem, Hadassah, she called Hadassah, she's called Hadassah because Hadassah are known as Hadassim. Uh, it seems like there's a reference here to Sanhedrin. Sadiqim, or it seems like over there that's discussed more. Chen hu amel, hu amed ben Hadassim. And that's what it says also in a pasuk in Zechariah. The Zechariah has a vision. Right uh, alayla, I'm just quoting the full pasuk. Right alayla, I saw this night. When I saw a man riding on a horse, Susadom. A red horse, who met Ben Hadassim, he's standing between the um, the myrtle, the Hadassah. Asher ben Metzula, v'achav, susim, adumim, shukim, ulevanim. So after they come more horses, this seems to be a Kodesh Baruch the Mashiach, and he's righteous, and by the fact he's standing between the Hadassim, it shows that he is righteous, and therefore she is called Hadassah. Rabbi Yudah Mer, Hadassah Shema. Rabbi Yudah goes the other way around. No, really, Hadassah is his name, is her name, as his real name. Why is she also known as Esther? Because she would be Mastira, she would hide her true lineage, family lineage, and where she's from, and that she's Jewish, Jewish even. And so Esther comes to the word hidden. As it says, the Megillah and Esther refused to say her nation. Why did she refuse? Because Mordechai told her to. Rabbi Nechemi Omer, Hadassashma. Why was she known as Esther? Sorry, Rabbi Nechem says her name is Hadassah. So why did she have a nickname of Esther? Because the nations of the world will call her Estahar. Estahar is a full moon in that language, and uh, meaning they were comparing her beauty to the full moon. Ben Azai Omer Esther. Uh, there's a small addition here in my Gemara. I have an Ozvahada. Ozvahada makes additions to Gemara where they have other older texts which, uh, with other writings. It says, rather, it means like this Esther is her name, 
So why is she called Hadassah? It goes back to that. Why is she called Hadassah? Because she was, wasn't too tall, as she wasn't too short. She was the height of a, rather she was middle height, a normal height, like the myrtle tree. Hadassah tree. Rabbi Yoshua ben Karcha, Amar Esther Yorkokaita, Kucha Chesed Mushuk Alea. This is the famous thing which a lot of people know the Midrash. Rabbi Yoshua ben Karcha said Esther was, had a green tint to her skin, and that's why she's called Hadassah. And she had a string of chesed upon her, meaning that God calls everyone. So Rashi claims, God caused it that she would look beautiful to the nations of the world, even though she was green. She didn't have a father or a mother. That pasuk is superfluous. It says she doesn't have a father or mother. And then it says later in the pasuk, and when they died, it says like this. I read the pasuk. It doesn't give the whole one on the page, but it does on the side. Vay omen et hadasa, and he adopted hadasa. He is still bad dodo. He adopted hadasa, and that is Esther, his niece. Ki ela av veim, because she didn't have a father or mother. But now if at twelve, the twelve mother, and she was a beautiful woman. The, the 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 young woman was beautiful. And when they died, Mordechai took him as uh, took her as a daughter. That's superfluous. We already know that he adopted them because of the death. Why is it repeated repeated at the end? So Gemara says like this: Lamali, Amravacha, Ibata met Avia. Just to know what happened, how destroyed it must have been for everyone. When she became, when Esther's mother became pregnant. Her husband, Esther's father, died. And when she was born, Yadata Metam Ima. And when she was born, the mother died. Okay, so Uvamot Avia Vima Lacha Mordechai Lo Levat. And when they died, father, mother, he took her as a daughter. That's the at least the direct translation. Tana Meshum Rabimir, Adke Levat Ela Levait. Don't read that he was taken, took her as a daughter, rather. To, uh, understand that he took her as a house, meaning made and married her, and she would create a house together with him. If you put this all back in the story, that means that Achashverosh, when he st- takes Esther, is actually Esther is actually a married woman, which makes the whole story a lot more complicated. Okay. <clears throat> so here we have the story where um, David has been told off by the Navi for taking Bathsheba and to, uh, sells us and uh, killing Oria, having Oria killed. We have here the Pasuk, Ularash Enkol, this poor Desu guy who has almost nothing. Kim Kivsa Achad, that's comparing Oriah to the man who has almost nothing, and the Kivsa being compared to uh, Batsheva. It's all to get to understand what, why we can understand Labat, meaning Labait as a wife. So he had, Oriah had a, this man in the, the marshal of the Navi has a Kivsa Achad Ketana, has one small sheep, Ashekana, which he himself bought, the Chia Vitigdalima, Imo, and he um, reared it and it grew up with him and his children, and it drank from his food and from his cup, and it lied with him in his lap, and it became to him like a daughter. Just because it lied with in his lap, it became to him like a daughter. It's a sheep for goodness sake. Rather, it meant that it became a part of the family um, and so to here, he, the um, Esther becomes part of the family, meaning married. But Sheva know for Gomer, right? So when Esther's taken there, she's taken to this like beauty parlor basically, and he's she's given seven. She ends up having seven servants to tend to her to beautify her. So 
the Gemara learns out why was it Dafka seven, why not nine, why not five? But Sheva and Arot, the Gomer, Amarava Shaitam on Ebem, you may Shabbat. This is the way she was able to keep on top of whether it was Shabbat or not. She would have seven girls and use each of, her, each of them on a different day, so she'd be able, able to remember what day she needs to keep, keep Shabbat. Vishane et Narotea, the Gomer, and it says that. She was changed and her, her and the, the, the youth. What does it mean she changed them, the, the young women that were with her? Amarav, she fed them um, Jewish food. And she was also eating Jewish food. And her, Rishmuel says she was actually feeding them and unfortunately feeding herself as well. Fatty bacon hog. Okay, the fattiest food. Um, and because she had to, she's not punished. She didn't have real control over the food that she was eating. Rabbi Yochanan, Amar Zeronim, she was eating small seeds. Chenu Omer, so too it says, um, and then we say, this is being brought, brought to prove that you can still survive off seeds. How do we know that you can survive off seeds? How is it even possible that that's what she was eating for so long? Um, this is in reference to Daniel. The servant is bringing these people who are refusing to eat treif seeds. And that's how this what they're surviving on. Okay, now it's going back to the beauty preparation process. Shisha Cholashim Bashemanamo, she would be in six months being you know anointed and basically moisturized with shemen hamo, which is a pshat, shemen made of myrrh with myrrh. My shemen amo, but now we're going to learn other meanings. So, Rabbi Chia Ba'aba says this Shema Or is what is known as Satchat, which is perfumed oil. Um, okay. Uh, and in the Aruch, it's called Mari Dachia, which sounds very much like Mordechai, because that's actually the n- 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 uh, name of Mordechai, one of the explanations. Mordechai, Mordoch, means. Um, crushed myrrh. So interesting, even though they're married, what is being, according to one of their understandings, Mordechai is now um, far away from his wife. His wife is in the palace of the king, and he, she, to beautify herself, is using crushed myrrh, which is actually her husband's name, which she's been forced at least to do. Ravuna Amar Shemen Zayt Shloi Ravuna says it's Shemen Zayt. Olive oil, which hasn't brought, this is made out of um, olives, which have only grown a third, less than a third. Tani Rabbi Yuda, Omer, we also hear, hear this from Rabbi Yuda, An Pikinon, this um, Shemen oil is called An, Pik, uh, An Pakinon, which is Shemen Zayt Shalovish, which is olive oil, like we just saw, which hasn't brought a third. Okay. Why was she being anointed and moisturized this? Shemeshir et Haser Madene Dabasa. It would remove hair and soften the skin. In the night, he, the women that he was trying out were going at night. In the morning, she would, the women would return. Now, this is a terrible thing. He was basically sleeping with a different woman every night. But we see something positive in what he was doing, or positive contact. We know that in Halakha, it basically speaks very much against having relations in the daytime, because it's not modest. Um, also, it's not good use of time. We need to be proactive and active in the day. I'm Rabbi Yochanan, Megenuto, Shel Oto, Rasha, from his shame of this Rasha, the man who Shivcho, we also hear his praise. Shloaya, Meshamesh, Mita, Tobayam. He wouldn't have relations with women during the day, only at night. But he has still no said Chen. Esther found grace, or grace. she was graceful towards Achashosh, Achashosh liked her. And Rilazar, it became such a thing that um, 
Sorry, the pasuk is in Osechem Bene Kore. Anyone who saw her would like her. What does that mean? It means that everyone who saw her, everyone trying to attribute Esther to their nation. Because Esther, like we've mentioned already, not in the Gemara itself, but we can see in a second, hid, her, hid away her fan, family story, who she, she, she was from. And as such, uh, everyone was able to think, oh, she's actually mine. She's from my neighborhood and she's so beautiful and she's mine for my nation. Okay, now, she's taken, as is taken to Achishwarash to have relations for him to get to know her um, in the 10th month, which is the month of Tevet, if you come from Nisa. Why is that important to know? God organized it, that would be in a very cold month, and it's um, the time when the body enjoys the warmth of the body, and as such, it was an added bonus for Achashvosh. Um, and the king loved her, Esther, from all the other women, and she found, he found, she found favor before him, and also... Um, and Chesed from all the other virgins. Amarav Bikesh Litom Tam Tula Tam Tam Bula. Sorry, Bikesh Litom Tam Tula Tam Tam Bula Tam. It says that she liked all the Nashim. She liked her, he liked her more than all the Nashim, and she was a Batula. Now, she, she liked her more than all the other Petulot. So why is it saying Nashim? He loved her more than all the women, all the, more than all the virgins. Achashverosh wanted to have some pleasure from being with her and was searching for different pleasures. And he searched for the pleasure of having relations with the virgin. He tasted that as well, or, or enjoyed that as well. And somehow also, when he wanted to taste the taste of a woman who had not had relations, had had relations, he was able to experience that as well. I mean, God's setting this up, whole thing up to enable Achshorosh to like um, Esther so Esther can become the queen and then marry Achshorosh. Okay. Um, okay. So she makes, he makes, I'm sorry, a big suda to impress her to find out what nation she's from. He did big suda and she didn't reveal what nation she's from. Dale Karga, Vlogalele. He lowered the taxes uh, to all the different states. So then she'd at least appreciate that she's from that nation who is getting the taxes lowered. And she refuses again. Shadar Pardishne Vlogalele. She sends gifts to him. Sorry. He sends gifts in her name to all the officials of the other cities, may, uh, other countries, other parts or provinces of his empire, meaning bigging up her name, giving her credit. She still doesn't say. Um, okay, and she's keeping the uh, secret. And then he gathered virgins again a second time. Why is he doing this? Azil Shakal He, Achashosh, goes to Mordechai, he recognizes him as a wise guy, and asks Mordechai, Give me some help to reveal who, from which nation Esther is from. And the advice that Mordechai gives is make her jealous and maybe then she'll say. And they have, he has a double aim here, which is he's trying to um, get people, get Ahasuerus away from Esther, which is his wife. And even if he wasn't his wife, he doesn't want a non-Jew non having relations with a Jew. And therefore, he's creating the situation. So it says like this. As is Shakari, it's a Mordechai. He takes advice from Mordechai. Amar eni shamit kana ela be'ech chaveta. A woman is only finding jealousy, who gets jealous only from the thigh of her competitor, meaning that the, her husband is interested in someone else. Baviyachi lo garele. And even so, she didn't reveal, even though he, right, she's not really interested in it. Uh, but um, 
Akashvaj thinks she is interested, but just doesn't want to reveal which nation she's from. And Esther isn't really bothered by the fact that uh, Akashvaj might be taking a different wife in addition to her. And even so, uh, Esther refuses to reveal who she is, which nation she belongs to. And we're going to finish here.